Hello and welcome to another Open Source Workplace video. I'm very happy to have Andrew Mawson back with us. Uh, Andrew is the owner of Advanced Workplace Associates. Andrew, how are you doing, sir? I'm well, Steve. Thank you. I'm well. Thank you. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. And I know it's getting late there in London, so I appreciate you uh, spending some time with us. Uh, I hope everything's well. London, I think, opened this week, right? Yeah, in fact, uh, I think the government just announced today that they're going to open some shops and things. So I think people are beginning to get a little bit uh, a bit more positive, which is uh, which is good. So we're obviously hoping not for a second wave, and um, and we're blessed uh, blessed through it. But the number of cases seems to be dropping, so so fantastic. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about you know a number of things around people working from home, the aspects of it, how it affects. Uh, social cohesion, people interacting. And what, what I really want to touch on, talk about today was as teams work away from the office or away from each other for longer, what are the things that, you know, teams, management, leadership need to be really considering and doing to, to help employees through this process? Mm, sure, sure. So, well, I mean, I think the first thing to understand is what's really going on here. Um, you know, I think a lot of chief execs uh, and a lot of leaders think that this is a done deal. In other words, we're all working at home now. So, you know, what's the problem? Everything is uh, everything's fine. And, you know, to a degree that's true. But the thing is that, um, of course, you know, this home working, this virtual working works for some people much better than it works for others. But the other thing, of course, is the success of what's going on now is really built on the bonds of friendship and the relationships and the trust and all the rest of it that's gone uh, you know, before this time, and sort of most of which has been generated in, we'll call it a traditional um, environment. Although I have to tell you, I think that tr the notion of this traditional environment is a little bit romantic. It, it, you know, I think this idea that, um, uh, you know, everything is well in the workplace and the office is a great place and people come and socialize and everybody's friendly and it's all, all this sort of business. You know, we, we know from the stats that something like sort of 79% of the population are disengaged with their work. So, you know, not everything is, is kind of rosy. So I think sometimes we, you know, if, when we start to, um, when we start to work away, if you think about it, we're beginning to spend less time with each other and we're sp spending less time in the same place. And we have a different social context, you know, whereas before, you know, arguably leaders and um, teams shared a single physical environment. They were well supported and they also had a, you know, a social context, which was very similar. Now, of course, we're moving to a situation where leaders have got to tune into lots of different physical and social contexts. I mean, you know, you've no idea when you go into a Zoom call with, you know, half a dozen people, you don't know how many of them are having some traumatic experience because their kids are playing up or they're about a row with their partner or, you know, they've struggled with the, uh, the, the, the washing machine is broken or anything like that. So there's lots of stuff, I think, which, you know, now becomes a bit more, you know, personal that starts to play into the equation. And, and we see less, we see people for less, less of the time. And as, <clears throat> as individuals, we start making judgments, some of which might not be quite as good. As, uh, as they were in the old world. So it, it's a kind of fracturing of the, of the romantic idea, if you like. Um, but it is fascinating to see that there are, you know, there are plenty of studies around that are showing that many people, particularly those who have got roles that require focus, uh, are finding that this is a better experience than the workplace. You know? and, and that's kind of intriguing, it seems to me. Um, and maybe tells us a bit about the way we've been designing the workplace no so so lots of things that are, are different really so you so see you, uh, i just want to dig into designing the workplace what do you mean by that what, what's what's the concern there that are the point you wanted to make well i think you know um you know the, the the idea of i mean i know it depends where you are in the world but i mean mm. it seems to me that this sort of um and we've experienced it here in the uk you know the headlong rush to what we'll call open plan uh, you know, which is basically taking the walls from around people and putting them in an open plan environment and then inviting them to do a whole manner of things, which, you know, many of which require focus and concentration. So I think we learned here in the UK that that simply doesn't work. 
uh, I, you know, that, I think it's kind of interesting because I see companies moving in that direction in the in the U.S. and and frankly, I think it's the wrong place to go. I think what we've learned here is that you need to create workplaces that actually enable people to conduct the functions of their role in, a, in a, as effective way as we possibly can. And what that means is, for instance, that if my role requires a high level of focus and concentration uh, and, and you know, no distraction, then really what I ought to be doing is making sure that I've got, you know, creating places in the workplace that afford me that capability. Now, of course, on top of that, there are needs that we have to work with other people, sometimes formally, sometimes socially. But what we need to be doing is thinking about the process of work and, you know, the higher order objectives we're trying to achieve. And then we should start building the workplace, you know, to suit the, um, the, the nature of work, but whilst at the same time, we're not making it too bespoke. So, you know, that's what I kind of mean. It's like design mm. with a purpose as opposed to design for aesthetics in a sense. Yeah, and I guess that's coming even more important whenever people are working from home, right? We've talked in the past about so change management process to get people from their home into the office. What, how are you going to entice me back, right? Why am I going to get on that, that commute to get yeah. into the office if it's not specifically designed for, for me and to help me do my job better, right? And I think yeah. that's, that's an important point of distinction to make too. It is. But I mean, just going back to your, you know, your earlier question, what's different when we're working when we're all working away, well, as, as I say, you know, we, we've got these multiple contexts now and we, you know, we know that some of the factors that, you know, make organizations tick come under quite a lot of stress when we start to have people dispersed. Because as I say, we, we have situations now where, you know, people um, can show you, I mean, if somebody's working at home, they can show you the, the the version of them that they want to show you if they if they want to mm. you're probably not going to be spending more than a couple of three hours a day um involved with them even at, at, at tops and so you know that you start to you know human brains start to work out if somebody's not where they should be or they're not delivering what you think they should be delivering or you know it's it, it, there's something not quite right and then you start thinking, well, what's going on here? You know, is there something else happening? And of course, you don't know because you, you know, you're only, you know, as a as a manager or as a team member, you're only human, and you 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 start drawing inferences and you start making judgments, and particularly people who are very conscientious and score very highly on psychometrics around conscientiousness will start to become very judgmental about their colleagues, and so, uh, you know. It, the, the game is a very different one and you, you you therefore need people to understand what's going on and, um, uh, and and be a little bit better at maintaining contact in understanding how people are feeling uh, becoming more empathetic in a sense um, and you know I, I think what we find is that when we have teams working in a more virtualized model you know fundamentally you know You've got to bring the level of skill in the leader and the team member up to the level of the best. And, you know, um, we know that, you know, leaders and managers are some really very gifted ones and very natural in, in managing um, relationships and trust and stuff. But we also know there are some that are pretty poor, particularly those that have been promoted because of their technical uh, excellence as opposed to necessarily their people management skills. So basically, I think when you start to, you know, expose some of those people um, to the vagaries of a more virtualized working model, then the cracks start to show. And over a period of time, you'll see that relationships start to dissipate. Um, you'll start to see trust beginning to diminish a little bit. And, you know, people won't be quite so willing to to work together um so there's 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 and you know, it doesn't have to be like that but it just it means that leaders and team members need to put a bit more time in to making sure that their arrangements and their relationships um are and remain in good shape you know because that's fundamentally mm. what organizations are are really about yeah. does that mean do you think 
leadership styles that were successful in the office may not be as successful in a virtual well, vice versa. Well, well, without giving the game away on the research that <laughs> we're just about to launch next week, um, it's clear that a more what we we'll call trans um, transformational um, management style in which a leader is more um, kind of democratic or supportive uh, and, and clearer in delivering objectives but works much better than a leadership style which is very transactional and uh, hierarchical and dictatorial. So, you know, to answer your question, in organizations where there is a degree of hierarchicalness uh, and where things are very transactional, where people are, are really treated as kind of human capital fodder, you know, this may not work quite as well. And, and some mm. of those leaders are may, may well have to learn, learn a new approach. Um, you know, that's, that seems to be what the research is telling us. And to be honest, that's been our experience as well in running AWA. Now, you mentioned there's research that you're releasing next week. What's, what's that, Andrew? So we, uh, Steve, we, we've had a relationship with a group in Amsterdam called the Centre for Evidence-Based Management for about seven years. And they are real zealots when it comes to the rigour around reviewing evidence, particularly from the academic community. And um, we've recently uh, done with them a review, a review of all the research around the world on the subject of virtual teams and virtual organizations. And, you know, through uh, looking at all of the studies of which there are circa 750, um, what we've been able to do is draw together the key strands that keep coming through on studies and draw them together into a practical report, which is called Managing the Virtual Workforce. And that report is gonna be launched next week and in it well, basically we un we uncover uh, unveil all the factors that make the biggest difference to the performance of virtualized teams and communities and also the the, the, the mediating factors the play a part in the in those primary factors as well so it's exciting because <clears throat> you know really i mean there's an awful lot of very good advice being given out by uh, you know, companies from all sides of the industry, but it's all very practical, which is fine. But I think what we're what we are comfortable about is that we have, with our friends in Amsterdam, been able to bring forward now what I would argue is the best available evidence on the planet in this um, in this area. Which is, I think, when you start to understand the rigor of the study, you understand that it's. Um, you know, it's, it's something that you can pretty much depend on and start building your mm -hmm. your organizational c capability for virtual you know virtual teams around it so yeah no it's a it's an exciting time mm. sounds sounds great and how do people get access to that andrew well um um it is a um membership perk um we run as uh, you know the advanced workplace institute which is a kind of a uk um us club and it's designed for leaders who really want to, you know, move the dial and operate a more scientific approach to the workplace. And our members will get that, uh, the full report for free. Um, they also will get a playbook, which will show them how to, you know, apply it within their organizations. Um, but we will be making free a, available a, a management summary, and that will be available on our website, um, www.advanced-workplace.com. Uh, as of next uh, Tuesday stroke Wednesday. Great, and if you know if you want to give us a link, we'll put a link uh, down below, and then people can can reach out That's and uh, so. and connect directly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Andrew, thank you as always for your time. It's always great to catch up. Uh, I appreciate uh, uh, chatting with you late in, in your evening. <laughs> Thanks for the <laughs> opportunity, Steve. Thanks. All right. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you.